All right, here we go now. Hey, everybody. Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionsSell.com. Today's Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. We're back for another edition of our Saturday Synopsis. I was out last weekend. Didn't have a video for you, but I'm back, ready to go. And uh, what do we do here on the Saturday Synopsis? We look at the charts. I'm a chart reader, technical analyst. I use the charts to help me decide when to get in and get out of trades. Fundamental analysis, which is another way to to value stocks, uh, is not really my thing. Uh, that is where you look at all the underlying data, price, uh, P.E. ratios, sales, revenue, earnings, dividends, all that good stuff. Um, but it's not for me. For me, everything is in the charts. All that information is reflected in the charts. You got millions of people trading in the markets every day, and all that information is out there in the public. So it gets reflected in the charts. So that's what I do. So let's just dive in as we do every Saturday. We'll look at the charts. We'll look at the indexes. We'll look at some individual stocks, show you the more popular ones, uh, specifically some stocks that have made some certain some moves so we could see it on the charts, see how I would have seen it, uh, what we would have done with it, and just go from there. So as we do every Saturday, we look at the SPY first, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. Gives us the best overall view of the market. Uh, what you see in front of you is, a, is two years worth of data on a daily chart. Each line here is one day's worth of data spanning about two years in time. Uh, a couple lines on here is my moving averages, a 20 day, 50 day, 200 day, all simple. And down here is the 14 day RSI. That's pretty much all I use other than eyeballing the charts. Just following the price action. The price action is what direction do you see the market or the stock going in? And that'll help you decide your course of action. Basically, the best thing we can do is draw these channels. I got these blue lines here uh, connecting the tops of moves and mostly the bottoms of moves. And it, and it creates a channel. It gives you a good visual of where the market's headed. Uh, if you're in the market and you've been following the market, you know we've been in this six-month-long downtrend. Um, almost seven months now. A little more than six and a half. Depends how July finishes. Since January 1st, right here, beginning of 2022, it's been all downhill. Some fits and starts, you know, little rallies, but they've all been sold so far. Okay. Um, but where are we now? I'm actually, I'm actually feeling pretty good about what happened this week. So from January... Through June, we've been enclosed in this downtrending channel. Let me let me make this a little bit thicker so you can get a good visual here because I want to show you what I saw this week. So give me a quick second here, a little manual labor. And so here you can see the, the, the clear downtrend here. And I think last week I may have even started to draw this little bit of an uptrending channel. You see the line here and a line here. And that's exactly what's been happening. So the good thing that I saw this week is that, <clears throat> and what I've been saying and what I've been writing to my newsletter people is that if the market can move up and outside of the downtrending channel, that would be a good start. And that's what we had this week. Let me open this up a little bit here. So we got Friday, which was yesterday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So every day this week, the market, the S&P 500, rallied up and outside of the downtrending channel. So that is a good first sign that maybe we finally turned the corner because we've seen these rallies, these little rallies have all been sold. Okay, the last major one was right here where it looked like everything was going up and then it just got knocked back down. Okay, so the same thing might have been starting here, but instead of getting knocked back down, it powered through and out of the channel. And here is the 50 day moving average right here, this line. And we got above that as well. So that's another good sign that maybe we finally turned the corner. A lot of the this news that's been driving the market has been factored in. And what news is that? That's inflation. Right here in the US and around the world, inflation has, is at the highest levels in, in the last 40 years. We know that the Federal Reserve here in the U.S. is raising interest rates. That's no secret. And the next um, meeting they have is, is, is next week. Wednesday, we'll know what the Fed or how much the Fed is going to raise interest rates. It's going to be either 75 basis points or a full point, either one. So that's not a surprise either. 
Um, the full basis point is not as expected as a 75 basis point move, but it's still in the realm. People are are sort of expecting it. So it wouldn't be such a shock or jolt to the system if the Fed raises by a full point. So I think a lot of that news is sort of being factored in. The war in Ukraine is, you know, we, we know that's happening. COVID's still out there. We know that's happening. So th- there's no new news anymore. We're just grappling with the news that's been out there. And those those four major news stories have been the, the biggest issues in what's been driving the market down and, and the supply chain issues as well. But I think that's starting to ease up too. So eventually all this, you know, bad news gets factored in and, and, and gets kind of put on the back burner and everyone starts looking forward down the road to sunnier skies and better days. So have we finally turned the corner it, it, it's starting to look that way. This this week was a, a was a good move. Okay, every day this week we ended higher. Um, although the market we put in a new high today, you can see the top of this bar was a new higher, a new high. It actually ended lower. You can see the little teeny dash mark on the right side of this bar uh, is where the market closed today. So we actually closed lower than we did Thursday, but we made a new high. So you can see. The momentum is on an upward trajectory. So we'll see how the market starts to play out early next week, if there's any momentum carrying through to the downside or not. What could happen at this point is if the market does come down, maybe it could bounce off the top edge of the channel and then go higher. Or or it may just keep going from this point forward. So I'm just a little uh, excited about what I'm seeing here. We had a good move this week, and the best thing would be to have that momentum keep going and then just the second half of the year, you know, end on a good note, but be wary. I mean, because we have been going down and all these rallies have been sold, but what I do like is how we moved out of the channel and got above the 50 day moving average. So we'll see. Let's look at the Q's, the triple Q's, which is for the NASDAQ. Um, Clearly there's a a lot going on here. Um, You know, it's in the eye of the beholder of, of where you want to draw your lines and 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 how far out or how much how much how many months weeks whatever you you want to draw the lines so let me remove these older ones and we can kind of get a fresh look at things want to eyeball right so obviously we can see the market's been going down now drawing the drawing the lines are it's sort of subjective, so here we can make it look like the S and P 500. So there's your your channel right there since April, last couple months, and clearly you can see the move up and outside of this channel. Got above the 20 day. Here here's the 20 day moving average, and here's the 50 day moving average. So the the Nasdaq popped above both the moving average and popped above the downtrending channel which is a good, really good sign. I mean, these tech stocks, which make up a lot of the NASDAQ, once they get going, this thing could power higher and power the whole market higher. So so the NASDAQ's looking pretty good here. Let's look at the Dow Jones. We use the DIA, the diamonds, um, as our gauge. Same thing, we can, we can draw some lines here. We use a top here, kind of connect some other tops here, you know, top here. And then we, you know, you can kind of pick your pick your spots, right? You just kind of draw the draw the line. A couple months worth is, is is a good look back period. People ask me how far back should I draw these lines? You know, I'd say at least three months on a daily basis to just to give you a visual of where the market's been going. So here as well, this week, the Dow was moving up and outside of the channel, got above the 50-day got above the 20 day. So things are things are hopeful right now I'd say is the best way to look at it for the market. If we can continue on this trajectory, then we've got some serious bullish momentum happening even in the face of those horrible news items. We're right in the midst of earnings season. Q2 earnings season is is in full swing. A lot of the big names have have announced um, we're going to take a look at some some of those names as well today. 
And if, if those numbers are, are not as horrible as you know people were thinking, that's going to drive stocks higher as well. So let's, let's first look at Tesla because Tesla was a big one this week. This week started off with, with the, some of the big names, and then the next few weeks we'll have all, the rest of the biggies coming out. So here's Tesla. If you've been watching these videos over the last few weeks, um, you've, know, you've known that I've talked about the um, $700 level on Tesla. You can see the markets moved up and down, up and down, above and below this, this baseline $700 level. And you can see I sort of had this channel here, but but this week you could have dialed it in even further. Um, right here we have um, a congestion pattern triangle right there, which is when a stock or index starts to get in a tighter and tighter range, smaller daily moves each day, and then it eventually is going to snap out of it and, and bust through one side or the other. So you can see the congestion. I mean, everyone knew that Tesla's earnings were coming up and no one was really ready to make a decision on which way they wanted to lean until after earnings came out. And once the the, the once it powers through, it really powers through in one direction. So you can see here in the last two days, Tesla rallied, you know, almost 100 points just in two days alone. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, well, how... Is there a way that I can play these earnings? Like when you get a huge move like this, how could I capitalize on that? And I, I always say earnings is a crapshoot. I mean, the, the the stocks can move either way. I don't really play earnings that much because, you know, you can get really good earnings and the stock will drop, or you get really bad earnings and the and the stock pops. It's it's a crapshoot. But in cases like this where the ranges get real tight, option premiums tend to, uh, you know, come in a little bit, get cheaper. Although when when people know earnings are coming out, the the option prices tend to get wider as well. So it, it's really hard to 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 know whether you're getting good value or not. I mean, you could look at implied volatility numbers, but anyway, the only way to really capitalize on this, if if you want to have a, um, a a defined risk, is to buy an a, an option straddle. And that's when you buy both a put option and a call option at the same time for same expiration, same strike, that you, no matter which way the stock moves, you could win. If you buy a call and the stock goes up, you can make money. If the, if you, if the stock drops and, you, and you've bought the put option as well, then you could make money. But it all depends on how far the stock is going to move because straddles aren't cheap. You have to, buy, you have to pay for both the put and the call. So here's a let me let me show you what we can uh, look at here to help you sh gauge, um, you know what what could help you. Let me pull up this website here. So this is marketchameleon.com. Let me let me show you the website here, marketchameleon.com. It's a great website for information uh, about you know you look along the side here. Uh, it's got some good information. But what I like to keep open is is the earnings page. That will show you number one when the earnings are coming out. So Tesla just had its earnings on July 20th, so Wednesday this week, this past week, and the next earnings are slated somewhere between October 19th and October 24th, 2022. But what what's good about Market Chameleon is it'll tell you what the it, this column right here implied straddle, meaning the price of the straddle will tell you how much movement the option market makers are expecting once earnings are announced. So in this case, the option, the straddle was projecting that Tesla could move either 6.1% higher or 6.1% lower than where it closed for trading right before earnings were announced. And then it shows you what actually happened afterwards. So here, the straddle was um, implying a 6.1% move above or below where Tesla closed that day before earnings. And here, in actuality, it went up, it, it moved almost 10%. It's not telling you which direction the stock's going to move. It's just telling you it could move higher or lower by this amount. And in, in actuality, it moved by almost 10%. So what does that look like on the chart? So let's, let's pull up Tesla uh, again here. So before earnings were announced, this bar right here, so Tesla closed at 
Um, let me move myself here for a second. This bar, Tesla closed at $742.50, okay? So let me just use my calculator here for a second. So 742 times uh, 6.1% is $45.26. So what the market is, what the option market is telling us that Tesla has the chance to move $45 either above or below where it closed the, uh, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. They announced after the close on Wednesday. So the mar so Tesla closed at 742. The market's predicting a $45 move higher or lower. And so what you see here, Tesla actually rallied. Here's Thursday and here's Friday. It rallied almost up to $850. So it rallied, you know, almost $100 a share since earnings. That's a big move, and it's bigger than the market had expected. So if you had bought the straddle, let's just say the 740 or the 745 straddle, meaning you buy the 740 puts and the 740 calls, or the 745 puts and the 745 calls, whichever one you decided. And let's just say that straddle costs $45, you know, $22.5 for the call and $22.5 for the put or some some number, some two numbers that would add up to $45. So as long as Tesla rallied more than $45 in either direction, either rallied or fell more than $45 in either direction, you would make money. So since Tesla went from $742 all the way up to, you know, on the high here, $842, you'd make, you know, $40, $40 per contract per straddle. That's $4,000. So in some, some cases, buying a straddle can work. But in a lot of cases, it doesn't work, meaning the stock doesn't move far enough in either direction for you to be able to sell those options for a profit. Now, let's just say um, Tesla closed at $742 that day, and it only went up to $750. That's only an $8 move. You paid $45. Right, that's a that would be a thirty-seven dollar per contract loss. That'd be thirty-seven hundred dollars, depending on how many straddles you bought. That's just for one straddle. So you have to be somewhat confident that that you think the stock's going to make a huge move. And having this congestion pattern sort of helped in that case because it was storing up all this energy. So we knew the 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 move would be would be strong. It just didn't know which direction. So if you had, you know, the balls to, to pay out 45 bucks, which is $4,500 just for one straddle, and you you were rewarded. So that's how, you know, you can make some money on, on, on earnings. But I think over the long run, you, you'll lose more than you win. But I don't have hard statistics on that. That's just for me and my past experience knowing that it just didn't work out in, enough times. So... But use that Market Chameleon. It's actually a pretty good website to look at some of that data. All right, so that's Tesla. So now Tesla has you know, moved out of this range now and has gotten above th this channel here, has gotten out of the congestion pattern. So it looks like Tesla may be ready to you know, make a new pattern here, a new move. It had been down in this downtrend, hit a high of above, you know, almost $1,250 before the split. They split recently. So, you know, that's Tesla. Um, let's look at some other stocks here. Snapchat was a big one yesterday. Uh, they had earnings after the close. Now you can see Snapchat, Snapchat, I'm not sure what I said. Gap here was probably earnings. <laughs> um, gap here, I'm not, you've got two gaps. One was down and then one was up. And then this last gap, the prior earnings, another gap down here. And then we had another gap down right here. So te uh, Snapchat closed this day at, let's see where this closed. Let me move myself here. So it closed on Thursday at $16.35 right here. And what happened? It dropped, it just fell below $10 a share. So that's, you know, over, over a $6 move. So let's see, 6 divided by 1630 or whatever it was, you know, that's a about a 37% move. 
37 percent move let's go back to let's go back to market chameleon and see what they had what the straddle was implying the day before earnings which was right here they had an 18 percent move baked into the options to the straddle price and right there so there was the 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 initial move was uh it says negative, that means the market fell. So it went down 39%. It, if it went up, you'd see a positive sign. So you can see here, 58.8% on that and back in February. So sometimes the market, they I mean, they have no idea how the stock's gonna move too. So if you bought the straddle here, you made money also because it moved more than what the market was projecting. So I don't know, maybe you start looking at the buying some straddles. So this is Snapchat. But anyway, if you were long, you have shares of Snapchat or you bought calls, um, it was not it was not a good day today for you. Um, let's see what other stocks. So let's go through some of our usual stocks. Let's look at AMD. I got a geez, I got a lot of lines here on AMD. I'm long AMD. Um, we just taking some profits on AMD in our newsletter. We sell puts, so we like when the market goes up. So we took some profits, finally. Um, AMD, let's, you know, here's some previous support levels, these lines here that I drew uh, here. Um, and here is the, the, the overall downtrend you can see, starting to move back up. I'm hoping that we can continue that move up. Um, but you know, it's still in this downtrend. We can extend this line. Let's remove and redraw. We can go all the way down, connect the tops here. Some of the tops doesn't have to be exact. So it's still contained in this downtrend. Um, it could, AMD could move up to the top edge and maybe get knocked back down or it could blast through. That's yet to be seen right now. So it's still sort of in limbo. Let's look at Apple. Apple. So obviously I had this 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 channel here drawn maybe a couple weeks ago. I can't remember when I drew it. So it was in the downtrend. Now it's in the up channel, which is nice. We like to see that. We like to see stocks in the up channel. Let's extend this thing a little bit more. Okay. So we go from here. Okay. Start connecting the tops. And we'll redraw the bottom one too. It helps with the visual because you, then you'll know like where the bounces and drops might occur from. <clears throat> so we're getting to the top edge of the channel. It could fall back and then bounce and then go up again, bounce, go up again. So that's the, the direction that Apple is in. You can kind of see the V shape here. All right. So Apple may be leading the market right now. That's a good thing. Um Disney, I always bring up Disney. So what I like about Disney here, it had fallen through the $100 level, the line right here, went through it, found some support, and has now gone back up through 100 and has moved above both the 20-day and the 50-day moving averages. So that's a good sign. like to see um, Disney start to move up. Now the 100 level could be support again. If it falls back down, could bounce and start to go higher. You know, before it bounced a number of times before it went through. So I'm hoping that it will hold. If it does fall back, I'm hoping that it will hold at the 100 level and then bounce. Yet to be seen. Walmart. I like Walmart. Bought some down here in the low 120s. As I like to say and I like to do a nibble. And these down moves and these downtrends. If you're in for the long haul, as we know, the stock market is the greatest wealth generator of all time. If you're in it for the long run, you buy on the dips. As hard as that may be at the time, you got to nibble on the way down on these quality stocks because eventually, eventually they'll turn around and go higher. You can't keep good companies down. They're still producing products. People are buying those products and the company's producing earnings, better earnings quarter after quarter. The stock price has to go up. Okay, so that's how the stock market works. Walmart, 
I know it's going to go up over time, along with the other stocks that I trade. Nike, another another stalwart, still sort of in the downtrend though. Okay, uh, but it's bumping up against this top edge here. Could it blast through, or will it get knocked back down? I think next week is going to be telling. Um, what other stocks do we have? Let's go through the list. Oh, Netflix. Let's talk about Netflix because they had earnings this week. We sold some put spreads on Netflix, bullish strategy. Unfortunately, it moved pretty quickly, so not all of our members could get in, but some were able to get in. Uh, Netflix, they didn't lose as many customers as was predicted, which I guess is a good thing. They're losing customers, but not as many as analysts thought, so that helped bump the price up. So Netflix... Maybe, maybe they're finally on their trajectory higher. Found the support just above $150, um, but had a good week this week. You know, rallied a good, um, you know, $60 a share right here. So Netflix might be, might be getting its mojo back. See what else we have that's worth looking at. Uh, Microsoft still in this downtrend. I mean, you'll have the drops, goes up, drops, goes up. Um, you know, that doesn't do much for anyone unless you're playing the shorter term, these swings. Uh, that's, you know, that's hard for me. I don't I don't really play the short run like that. Uh, so Microsoft, you can clearly see is in this downtrend, but it has the run-ups. Um, it's got the 20-day and 50-day just sitting right on top of each other right here. That just means there's a lot of indecision. Not really sure what it wants to do. That's Microsoft, uh, Intel, no. Oracle, we're still holding our Oracle put sell, getting getting ready to take profits on that one pretty soon. Um, let's see, Cisco, Procter and Gamble, Disney. We looked at so the healthcare stocks still going strong. Lilly, Bristol Myers, Pfizer. Merck still hanging in there. So Kellogg, oh, what I want to see, Verizon, um, Verizon and AT and T, the two biggest carriers. Not a good, not a good last couple of days. Look at this move in Verizon. I've been wanting to get into Verizon for so long, and it just the time has not been right. And I'm glad we had, we didn't because another drop. And let's go back to the the long term chart here. Uh, let's go back to the monthly. So here's a monthly chart. So Verizon sitting right on the 200 month moving average. That's the Mac Daddy of moving averages. That's the biggie. Will it? Will this be the area where it bounces? The last time it hit the 200 day moving average was in 2015. Fell just slightly below it, but bounced back good. Will we bounce from here? Uh, and when you look at the daily. You know, this would be a really scary time to buy for sure. Our size getting oversold too. So, you know, I may I may consider nibbling a little bit on some Verizon shares. We'll see. But this move was tough. Let's see what AT&T looked like. Same thing. They had a earnings, obviously. But not looking as bad as Verizon. But I like Verizon better. So I may have to start looking at some Verizon shares soon. PayPal starting to maybe get some mojo here. Has gotten above the 50-day and the 20-day moving average. I'll open this up a little so you can see it. Uh, still in the downtrend, this this little recent downtrend, but it may be it may be popping outside, maybe getting above it. So keep an eye on PayPal. Square, let's look real quick. Partner in crime. PayPal and Square. So I kind of like I like a little bit of this sort of rounded bottom here. Got above the 50-day, just popping above it a little bit. So keep an eye on PayPal Square. They, there could be a turning point for them. Costco still doing well. Uh, here's, here's, here's Warren Buffett. I talk about it a lot. Also in the downtrend, but has had this little move up higher. It's got this 50-day, maybe going to have some resistance above it. I still have my report that I wrote on my website, the Warren Buffett book. Um, you can take a look on our website. It's under the shop heading, uh, option strategy that I wrote to 
piggyback Warren Buffett for really pennies on the dollar. Here's Meta down today in conjunction with Snap down 13, almost $14. Um, I think that's about it. These stocks that I have down here don't really pay too much attention to. The uh, Bitcoin stocks, Clorox, starting to get some mojo, Colgate. Oh, Coca-Cola. Always got to talk about Coca-Cola. Clearly in a long-term upward trajectory. It's pulling back. Um, 200-day moving average right here. I missed the last time for our our newsletter to get in, bought some shares, but maybe it'll pull back again to the up sloping 200 day moving average. If it connects here and then bounces, it could be the next good timing play to get in on some bullish plays. So we may look to sell some put options there, uh, depending on when earnings comes out. So let me take a let me take a quick look, see when earnings comes out. Go to Market Chameleon. So uh, the 26th of July, so that's Tuesday. Keep an eye on Coca-Cola for Tuesday. All right, I think that's about it here for the stock list. Go back to the SPY real quick. I, I, I like the, of course, how it popped out and above the downtrending channel, got above the moving averages as well. So keep an eye for next week. Maybe we get some momentum to keep it going. All right, let's quickly go to our website. Once again, smartoptionseller.com. Put Selling Basics right here. Get your free copy of the report that I wrote, the ebook. Talk to you all about Put Selling Basics. Put your name, email address in here. Uh, we'll send you an email with the link to download the ebook. That's how it works, okay? What else we do? We have our services. We have our two newsletters, Selling Naked Puts, Selling Naked selling naked Puts, Selling Put Option Credit Spreads, and our coaching services. Uh, if you want to look for the, the Warren Buffett book under the More tab, click on the shop here. It'll be there. All right. You can, you can use our probability calculator for free if you know how to use that. All right. So that's it for me today. Um, I hope everyone has a good weekend. I will be gone. The next two weekends, I won't be here to make videos, so I'll catch everyone in a couple weeks. Uh, wishing everyone um, good trading week ahead, trading weeks ahead, and, I, and I'll see you all in a few weeks. All right, this is Lee Lowell signing off.